think you will be very happy. So let's jump into game one and see if it is going to be breaking out here in game one of this loser's bracket round three match. It's going to be Raichu and Cresselia actually leading out there for Federico. Grimmsnarl and Venusaur being the choice, however, um, for Nick. And, you know, Venusaur, he's led this quite often without the Torkoal. Torkoal might potentially be hiding in the back, but Nick has also been proven to not even bring the two together. Sometimes just letting Venusaur shine on its own, getting that G-Max Vine Lash up and getting residual damage out on the field. Yeah, it's a nice a nice lead here from, from Nick again. You know, we've seen how well and effective this lead can be. And with the flexibility of options like Torkoal to switch in from the back. But not only that, but with the, the screen support that the Grimmsnarls can provide for the, the Venus off, it does decide to go for the G-Max here um, and start getting damage onto the, the opposing side of the field very quickly. Cresselia in a position where it can potentially go for a Trick Room and Raichu in a position to get a, a nice supporting fake out off. But uh, is going to be susceptible to getting a big attack in potentially knocked out from this Venus Orphan does decide to go for the G-Max. Yeah, straight away going for a um, Gigantamax up there on Nick's side of the field with that Gigantamax Venusaur. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see that G-Max Vine Lash come into effect, start setting up the um, residual damage going onto the field here because that can certainly start adding up and breaking potential focus sashes here as well potentially on that Raichu. Raichu actually looks like it was going straight there for the fake out so gonna fall onto um, no avail there really you know Venusaur in the um, Gigantamax form won't be able to flinch. Is able to go for the Vine Lash however connecting down onto the Cresselia does a huge amount of damage as well taking down to nearly 50% damage depleted as Venusaur takes a little bit of life orb recoil as well. Cresselia however is going to be able to utilize the that trick room and this is something Grimmsnarl is not going to mind too much having the prankster ability it doesn't really mind about the speed stats no it doesn't at all the prankster ability kind of negating any sort of the uh the trick room setup there and allowing it to still set these screens up you know it's already got one up and it can still support as much as it wants with that prankster ability and venus are also not really too worried at the moment either with the trick room setup you know the raichu in front of it now is is definitely not a pokemon that likes being in a trick room setting so maybe a max quick into that slot might not be a bad idea from nick you also get the special defense boost um or you could maybe just concentrate and target down the cresselia just remove it from the field because we saw the damage that previous turn from the the gigantic Vine Lash, it did so mm. much damage and it's going to be able to pick the damage up again this coming turn. Well, a Pokemon that also doesn't mind being in Trick Room is going to be Dusclops and it's joining the field, asserting some pressure as Federico decides to retreat the Cresselia in place of Tappy Finney. Now, if potentially that Venusaur has gone for a G-Max Vine Lash into that slot, it's going to be able to deal a huge chunk of damage. The Misty Surge has activated on the field, so we know Raichu can't get up to any Nuzzle shenanigans here, putting any Pokemon into a state of paralysis. And it is indeed the G-Max Vine Lash going to connect down onto oh. that Tappy Finny that switched in. It's a solid one hit KO, Lee. It's down in one hit. Unfortunately, the Tapu Fini coming in on the wrong turn here for Nick, who's just taken full advantage of the fact that he knows he's got nothing to lose going into that Cresselia slot here, making sure that he can remove it from the field um, and and take it down. And But the Tapu Fini switching in, really punishing here for Frederico, who's just trying to maybe change his board position a little bit. The right cheek getting out for free, and it does allow the stack attacker to get in. But on the other hand as well, you look at Nick's side of the field, he's got that Dust Clops onto the field now and in a great position where if he wants to he can reverse the trick room quite freely this next turn yeah so much just went on in that particular turn tapu finney's gone down it allows federico to bring in two pokemon that you know don't mind being in this kind of trick room environment stack attack is certainly is the optimal pokemon to have here but as you mentioned dusclops can just reverse around the trick room of course cresselia and stack attack are both of access to trick room as well but if Federico is locking into that move, then that Pokemon obviously isn't going to be able to deal any offensive pressure in this Trick Room environment, leaving the Venusaur free to go for another one of those G-Max Vine Lashes. And going into either of these Pokemon is going to deal a huge chunk of damage. On the same side, if you're Federico, you know, Cresselia is known to sometimes carry the move Ally Switch. So it can potentially try and predict exactly where Nick's going to target with his um, Venusaur. And if it's suboptimal to Federico, he can try and switch up which Pokemon is going to receive that attack. It's going to be a Dynamax, however, straight away for Federico. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see this being the stack attacker. It's already a big Pokemon, but hey, let's just double the size and its HP stat as well and make it even more formidable. Um, I think the critical thing with stack attacker, though, as well, is it can start going for things like Max Steel Spike, start boosting up the defenses, um, can also go for Max Rock Falls and set up some of that... Um, 
Sandstorm as well and start dealing some damage. But Chris Elliott is indeed going to go for the ally switch here. So Stack Attacker, even though it is big, is going to switch right over to the other side of the field here as Stack Attacker goes for that max Rockfall. Going to be able to connect down onto the Venusaur. Does a decent chunk of damage, but there are no boosts on Stack Attacker at the moment. So not going to be in any range of a KO, but does set up the sand. Going to be setting that residual chip damage up every single turn as well. Venusaur is going to go for the G-Max Vine Lash. It's going to fall down onto the Stack Attacker that was where the Cresselia was. And Stack Attacker going to be able to take that really well. Yeah, Sean, it's defensive capabilities here. Taking that a lot better than what the Cresselia took it earlier. Um, and, be, and really taking advantage of the Trick Room here while it has got the time to. Um, the problem is now Venusaur um, is going to be back in its, its preferred environment. The Cresselia revealing the ally switch, which does throw up the mind games. But, you know, the Cresselia are in a position now where one more turn and one more round of these G-Max Vine Lashes to go. It will fall and it's going to be prone to even something like um, a Nightshade from the Dusclops as well. So in a really, really awkward position now. And does Frederico want to try and preserve it? It is his only means to setting up Trick Room at the moment with that stack attack I've been in Dynamax form. Not going to have access to that option anymore until it is reverted back. And still going to be threatened heavily by something like an Earth Power as well from the Venus Soul. Yeah, the stack attacker as well, setting up that um, sand as well, going to be boosting up its special defense, which is going to be great when you're facing down against that Venusaur. Um, it does give Nick a couple of options depending on how he wants to play this game going forward. If he wants to switch up the board state, um, now that you know there isn't the trick room there on the field, he wants to try and utilize having a fast fast Pokemon on the field and using them to the best of his ability. Venusaur, of course, can't go for any status afflictions while that Misty Terrain is in effect on the Pokemon, of course, that are grounded. Venusaur is going to go for that Leaf Storm, however, connected down into the Cresselia. It is enough to pick up the KO. Would have, of course, still done some good damage to that Stack Attacker if there'd been another cheeky alley switch in there, but doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Cresselia has left the field going back to its Pokeball as Dusclops does go for that Nightshade. Just going to do 50 HP to that Stack Attacker that can fire off a Max Rock fall in return. This is going to target down onto that Dusclops. Again, going to be able to take that really well. Stack Attacker doesn't have any kind of attack boost at this stage. Um, and it really does need that in order to start dealing out some really big damage. Yeah, this is a, it really needs the support of the Trick Room. And without the Cresselia now on the field to provide that support, it's going to be very difficult for it to uh, gain any momentum and especially take advantage of these Dynamax turns without any sort of boost from a weakness policy or anything like that. We don't know the item on it yet. So um, it's it's very difficult for Frederico to get the damage essentially he needs off. And um, the Raichu coming in, in in a pretty healthy position, but not really in a Pokemon that you rely on an offensive presence that can do the damage that you need especially in this situation when you're facing down against the Dusclops and um, a Venusaur with, with also the Grimmsnarl and an additional Pokemon in the back for Nick. Exactly, and Raichu joining the field here. It can easily go for a fake out into that Venusaur, but instead just going to go straight up for the Vault Switch here. Um, it's not quite enough to pick up the KO against the Venusaur, so Stack Attacker will be exposed to this Earth Power. Um, not going to be able to take it and will be KO going up in a nice big explosion there to return to its Pokeball. You can see it really crumbling. It loses its legs and the animation as it falls down. <laughs> um, but Venusaur, however, you know, too strong for itself, even going to KO itself in recoil, leaving Dusclops here to go for the Nightshade connecting down into Raichu, doing again 50 HP. Raichu, however, is still gonna have that little bit of chip from this Sandstorm, as is, of course, Dusclops, and this residual damage really coming into effect quite strong. Yeah, and now it's it's really out of Federico's hands, and Nick gonna be able to close this one up uh, quite easily here as he brings the Grim Snarl back onto the field, not revealing that that fourth and final Pokemon to Federico, which is the smart thing to do. You don't necessarily need to do that at the moment, and it kind of keeps a bit of you know information back for for the next game that um, Nick has got the advantage going into with uh, that um, this first round win because the Raichu, unfortunately, as you can see, is just not gonna be able to do the damage that it needs to either of these Pokemon on. Nick side of the field and uh, poor little Raichu falling <laughs> victim to a spirit break there from that scary Grimmsnarl. Yeah, Grimmsnarl is pretty terrifying in more ways than one, but it was able to pick up the KO there, allowing Nick to take game one of this set. And I mean, what a phenomenal game we got to see there. And I think one of the real big turning points was when the speed control was being controlled. Um, I mean, you know, the Cresselia getting that trick room up straight away looks really good for Federico. If he's able to then utilize it to get his stack attacker into a good position to apply some pressure, potentially try and get it some boosts up as well so it can deal even more damage using those max turns. But unfortunately, when there's a dust clops on the opposing side of the field, it will always carry that move trick room as well. Um, you know, it's very, very rare we'd see dust clops not carrying it and having the ability to be able to change that trick room up to allow Nick to have control of the board state once again really did put him right back into that driving seat.
Yeah, it's very difficult, especially when I think the damage as well that we saw at turn one onto the Cresselia through the Venusaur, that, that mm. G-Max Vine Lash damage, taking about 50% health, and then you're factoring in as well the, the residual damage from uh, the G-Max Vine Lash side effects as well, you know, every turn chipping away so mm -hmm. much damage, really making Cresselia into a Pokemon that has been known throughout its time in the, the competitive scene as a very good support of Pokemon. They really didn't do any of that, you know, what we're used to seeing it do in that match it was just damaged so heavily and we're not used to seeing that but these these Gigantamax and Dynamax Pokemon just dealing with a Pokemon like Cresselia that's been such a kind of defensive uh, tank almost uh, in mm -hmm. the past it's just making it seem easy work and without that support network there for the stack attacker and like you say with the Dusclops being able to come in and disrupt and really Nick you utilizing it perfectly there and supporting the Venusaur in such a way uh, it's just a bit too much for, for Federico and it really needs to be a bit quicker I think with setting the trick room up if that's the mode that he wants to go for mm -hmm. and maybe getting that stack attacker in and if he's got some means of getting attack boosts onto it then that's what you're going to have to do early on or maybe look for a different direction completely in the team because the Venusaur is probably going to come out again from Nick I don't know why you mm -hmm. would change things up and that's going to be the thing that you're going to need to have answers for going into this next one yeah, it's amazing seeing the Venusaur actually doing so well without any sunlight on the field as well. It's really <laughs> yeah. holding its own out there. So let's jump into game two and see exactly how these play players are going to change things up. I mean, like you said, Lee, wouldn't be surprised to see that Venusaur at all out there in the action. But Federico might want to shake it up a little bit. And there's going to be a Moltres on the field paired up with that Raichu. Grimmsnarl and Glastria, however, being the Pokemon options there for Nick. And the one thing I love about having the Raichu here is it does provide um, any potential kind of Lightning Rod support um, for that Moltres if there were to be any electric type moves you know in terms of a team building strategy that's really really strong there from Federico but the critical thing here for Raichu is it's able to go for that fake out allowing Moltres potentially to be able to set up that nasty plot and you know Grimmsnarl as well um, has the opportunity to maybe go for some screens Raichu might be able to try and shut that down yeah, you've got to be scared as well if you're, you're Federico. You've got to be cautious about the Glass Dragon going for the, the, the Dynamax here, turn one, and just attacking straight into your Moltres. Of course, without any sort of screen support yourself or Intimidate support, the Glass Dragon is kind of going to be doing a lot of damage. And because of the Dynamax ability, you kind of mitigate any chance of being faked out and avoid that, that flinch opportunity there that the Raichu holds currently. Well, Nick is going to shake things up. There's going to be no Gigantamax between the sword because there is the Dynamax Glastria out on the field. Moltres, however, just going to go straight away for a Protect, maybe trying to catch a Max Hailstorm through the Protect to activate that weakness policy for free. It's going to be a um, light screen set up there by the Grim Snarl as Raichu goes for Charm. So really interesting to see this move coming oh. out here. Going to be lowering the attack by two stages. Um, but of course, the White Herb oh. on Nyx. Glastria just going to reset that and going for the Max Hailstorm. Going to connect down into the Raichu. So not going to fall into the trap set by Moltres and taking the Raichu right down to its Focus Sash. But of course, setting up that Hail, that last little bit of chip is going to be able to remove the Raichu from play. Yeah, what an incredible item. Again, we're seeing that come into full effect here. You think when you see the charm there from the Raichu, what a great play. You know, you're really reducing the, the damage output from this Glastria, making it very difficult for getting any momentum later on in this game. But the White Herb there coming in so useful for, for Nick, just overwriting those drops and putting it right back in a, a pole position to take down the Raichu, especially with the Focus Sash there, targeting the right slot, making sure that he takes down the support network there for the Moltres and um, the Grimstall going to be able to set up more screen support, just provide more support going into this next turn for the Glastria and maybe it's time to uh, if you get rid of the, the Moltres here of course it could be a time to um, set your own trick room up especially if we don't see the stack attack like here from Federico Yeah it's going to be interesting which Pokemon Federico is going to bring in it's going to I think really sort of carve out the way that he wants to play the rest of this game is going to be that Tappy Finney coming into effect once again so setting up the Misty Surge not going to be able so the Misty Surge setting up the Misty Terrain not going to be able to let any status afflictions happen to those grounded Pokemon but Moltres here now it can't go for the Protect again I mean it can but the, the risk is too high what do you think it's going to go for on this occasion Lee? You feel like if there's something in the back to maybe switch it in just to, and now if you are Frederico trying to stall out these um, these uh, these Dynamax turns from the Glastrias, they're probably the best thing to do. Preserve your Moltres for later in this game. Uh, you can see how much he didn't want to take big damage that first turn there from uh, protecting it, but in that awkward position, like you say now, where you know you can't go for those consecutive pre protects very safely. So switching it out mm -hmm. here could be a nice option. Depends what you got in the back. Have you got something like Cresselia that could potentially come in and kind of soak up the damage a little? bit better than what he's got out on the field at the minute definitely an option but 
Nick definitely in the driving seat and it's all in Federico's hands to kind of do something right now to, to try and get an advantage back. Well, Federico bringing in that mysterious Cresselia. Um, if they can survive out the turn, you've got to watch out for that alley switch that we know Federico not only has on team, but hasn't been scared to use either. Federico, however, also going to be Dynamaxing up his Moltres. And this is where things can get a little bit interesting here for Nick, because if you target it down with a super effective move, you're going to be activating that weakness policy. So if you're Nick, double targeting into it and hoping that it is going to be enough to pick up the KO is going to be the strategy here. Moltres moving first, however, going for that Max Darkness, targeting down into the Glastria, not doing a lot of damage but is going to be reducing that special defense um, on both of Nick's Pokemon that could come in critical in the next turn particularly with Cresselia as well being a special attacker could be optimal Spirit Break going to go down into that Moltres going to be of course lowering the special attack but activating that weakness policy so negating the drop from the um Spirit Break there as Glastria follows up with the Max Hailstorm that's going to be able to connect down into the Moltres as well. Is it enough to pick up the KO? Yes, it is. It is enough. It takes the big knockout there on Federico's, you know, Dynamax Pokemon here. So it's a huge turn. And if you're Nick, I think you make the, the, a really good call there because, you know, you're normally worried, and we've said this before on, um, throughout this event, that you're worried about activating the weakness policy on the Moltres that's the biggest thing but when you're moving after it and you've got screen support from the Grimmsnarl you know you saw the damage from that Max Darkness doing nothing to the Glastria there so being able to hit it after it's attacked is perfect because you know even if you get it very close to it being knocked out the hail damage there still residual damage going to come into effect and probably do the work for you so really nice play removing that and like I say Nick really in the driving seat now and just with this Cresselia and the Tapu Fini left on the field yeah, exactly. All those kind of things sort of stacked up in Nick's favor. Like you said, the double target, even if it wasn't quite enough, you wouldn't have to worry too much about the Moltres with the hail being able to pick up the KO against it. So the speed tiers and the sort of environment really helping out there. Tappy Finney, however, going to go for that car, my boosting up special defense and special attack as well as Cresselia wants to follow up with a Ice Beam. Going down into that Grim Snarl, it is going to be our minus one special defense, but still able to take that really well, able to retaliate with that Spirit Break into Tappy Finney. Does a decent chunk of damage and can, of course, negate the boost that it just got from that calm mind glastria however still to move going for the max hailstorm is what it's been clicking um and it's certainly been paying off cresselia takes a huge amount of damage from that as the hail will of course do its residual chip as well so much damage coming out from this glastria here lee so much you know after that chilling nair boost as well it just gets so powerful and um nick really doing well with these dynamax turns with the glastria and showing how good a partnership that the, the grim style glastria combination can be you know it just needs that screen support and once it is dynamax it's even more difficult just to get damage onto and the thing is it's not like it's a, it's, it's not throwing out the huge damage itself like you've just mentioned lou look at that damage it's nearly 75 percent damage mm -hmm. that it's done to the chrysalia there which is just phenomenal on such a, a big and defensively built pokemon tapu finney has got a calm mind but be being mitigated all the time by the spirit breaks by Grimmsnarl so you can go for those as much as you want but you're only getting that special defensive boost which isn't really helping you against the physical threat in front of you. Exactly. Going to be a helping hand, though, from Cresselia. Really wanting to support Tappy Finney into these last turns of the match. Going for that muddy water. Now, this is where things can change if accuracy drops want to come into effect. Is able to connect on both Pokemon, but no accuracy drops to be found. Um, going to go for that Spirit Break connecting into the Cresselia, but not enough to pick up the KO. I think Hail, if it is still going to hang around on the field, will be enough, however. Cresselia following up, however with the close combat and that's the sort of um, nod to past days a close combat going into a Cresselia there Lee <laughs> definitely a little throwback there but just making sure that you are getting the damage that you need to remove the Cresselia because you don't want to be going into these next few turns if you're Nick and having to worry about ally switch because especially ally switch and calm mind as a combination that's when Federico could really kind of turn this game on its head and start to turn the tables and start to maybe build a little bit of momentum you want to just just nullify that as soon as possible and by just dedicating 100% accurate move into that slot just means with the spirit break backing it up there you're going to be able to do that take that down and now it's just the the Tapu Fini versus the world here well Federico not giving up goes for that muddy water does manage to avoid the grim snarl and again no accuracy drops of course um however Tapu Fini will have a special attack dropped here Glastria going to follow up with the high horsepower connects onto Tapu Fini and thanks to the boost it's got from Chilling Nay easily going to be able to pick up the KO allowing Nick Navarre to advance so phenomenal play there from Nick huge congratulations to him and to that Glastria I mean that was a Pokemon operating outside of Trip